Why does she support what you're doing? I think that it's, I think that she and I both share this in common is that we don't view this as balance in a certain sense. If we were going to view this as a game of balancing competing responsibilities, <laughs> no chance. <laughs> Cause I mean, just think about the endeavor I'm on with two young kids at home. You know, I, I've built businesses and everything else, but this is another scale altogether at the age of 37 with a wife who's a full time surgeon. If we're playing in the game of balancing, there's no balance in this. <laughs> that, that, that ball game's out. I think it is because it is part of a shared project of asking ourselves, how do we make the most of the short time we're given on this earth? Right? There's more to our life. We, we agree on this. There's more to life than the aimless passage of time. We were put here for a purpose. I think that my wife, Apoorva, she shares a conviction that I was put here to pursue the purpose that I'm pursuing now. Does that end in the White House? I mean, we, we certainly hope so not for ourselves, but for our sense of purpose, but that's God's plan, not ours. But she believes that I am following my purpose, just as I believe she is following her purpose in doing what she does today. And there have been times in our life where, you know, we, we talked about that cooperative tension. Well, that's a team sport, actually. It's like when, you know, I mean, it's like almost an analogy of, you know, Kobe Bryant, right? The way he would push his fellow Los Angeles Lakers, they're, they're still part of the same unit. And so, you know, I'll give you an example. When when our first son, Karthik, was born, he was born in February of 2020. We had moved to Ohio not long before that, but Apoorva was finishing up her, her final months of training in Columbia and Cornell Hospital, New York Presbyterian's hospital system to be an ENT. She's the throat surgeon she is today. And you will remember February 2020 was right. He was born on February 23rd of 2020. That's right on the cusp of that first wave of the pandemic in New York City, where unlike the later waves that were catastrophized, you know, that was a real wave of, in New York City, condensed Manhattan's hospitals were, for a matter of months, overrun in the ICUs included. And she has this special skill set <laughs> as a throat surgeon, but she is three weeks into giving birth. You know, she could take as long of a maternity leave as she wanted. She felt that this was her duty. Her colleagues were short-staffed. I think one of them was maybe was without violating any <laughs> norms or anything, gently suggesting what kind of trouble they're going through and facing. And she just said, okay, it's my obligation to go back. I'm a biotech CEO. I'm running a successful enterprise, multi-billion dollar company. But it's 2020. Circumstances have changed. We brought our first son into this world. It was the early stage where nobody knows the first thing about this virus. And so literally in March of that year, she made the decision she gave birth on February 23rd. By mid-March, she's already made the decision and going back in mid-March to treat patients on the front line, do open-air surgery of people who are COVID positive at that time. At the time, people didn't know whether that was a significant thing or not to be concerned about if you have an infant. And so what did I do? I was in Ohio for a month and a half with our newborn infant. You know, the one thing they said is it probably doesn't affect young people badly, but you don't want an infant you don't know yet. And so, you know, back in March and April of 2020, I took a step back from my day-to-day -day grind as a biotech CEO to say that, you know, we've got other people in charge. I'm taking a little bit of time to play my dad, my role as a dad, as a father. And I was the one, you know, mixing up our, you know, mixing up formula or taking the breast milk she FedExed to us and feeding the little man. That actually gave us a unique bonding that I don't think we otherwise would have had if I was still in the hustle and bustle of traveling internationally and doing deals and developing drugs that I'd been doing in the two years before. But that was that moment. I think that Apoorva and I sat down in December and I couldn't have predicted to you that I would feel this way, but I felt compelled. I felt and I continue to feel that same sense of duty for all the reasons we talked about earlier that I have to do this. This is what's right. I think that this is quite possibly the purpose for which I was put here. And I cannot let this moment pass, even though we have all the reasons in the world of the inconveniences of this journey of running for president being the wrong thing to do right now. This is what this is what I feel compelled to do. And in an instant, I mean, she she had for us as a unit to make sure this is the right question for us, pushed me as she does. Are you sure that we shouldn't be doing this even 20 years from now? Suppose even it is your 
destiny and your role to be the U.S. president? Shouldn't we do it when these kids are out of the house, when we have more experience? And, and, and we, she pushed me and we pushed each other to make sure that we had conviction that this is the right answer. But once we have that conviction, she's all in in the same way because this isn't my project versus hers. This is asking the question of why we as a unit were brought together, why God each put each of us here, put us here together to realize our purpose in the world. And does that mean that I'm then attached to and fetishizing the result of being the White House? No, I think that would actually be the wrong way to look at this. But if I am called to do what I am now, we will be open and open-minded and open-hearted to whether God's plan has me in the White House next November or next January of 2025 or not. We're not attached to that result, but I am attached to following out what I believe is my conviction and duty, but I couldn't do it without the foundation of a family starting with a spouse, a wife who pushes me to actually do not more of, not, not less of that and view it as some balancing act or trade-off, but actually further in the direction that I already feel called to go. And there's no way I would have achieved the success I have in my life. There's no way I would have the capacity to do what I'm doing now were it not for that. And I would, I would like to think if Apoorva were here, she would, in her own version of success that she's had in her life, the impact she's having on the patients she sees every day, that I've played a role in pushing her to do the same.